Hi and welcome back. Let's have a look at these Ateza gouache collars. I have been testing them out a little bit, so I already got some opinions on them. Of course, I'm an opinionated person. Uh, it's been something I've been blamed for my whole life, so I got opinions. Yes, 23 colors and there's 23 because there's two whites in here. There's 24 tubes, but there's only 20, uh, 23 colors. So here's the two whites. And let me focus on them if we can get. So one is called white and the other is titanium white. They got different uh, color numbers. and But if you look at the pigment content, uh, focus again, PW6 in both of them. That is titanium white in the both. So when I first saw this, when I opened it up, when I it came here, I thought the white would maybe be a mixing white where they put maybe some more fillers in and less of the pigment. Um, and after having swatched them out, I'm not sure about that anymore because it, uh, it came out um, pretty much the same. That's the white and that's the titanium white, and I see no difference in opacity or, or I didn't feel anything major in in how they handle. So um, two types of white. It, it's also okay because there's a uh, gouache is one of the paints where I actually do use white, and people who do gouache use white more than uh, you would do if you do just do watercolor. So um, there are. Here's the swatches of all the colors. So the two whites at top and the rest in the order that they lay in in the in the box. So we've got a couple of yellows, a cold and a warm, and that's good. We got a yellow ochre. We got a this is called light apricot, but it's really a like a skin tone. Scarlet and vermilion, two warm reds. Then there is burnt sienna and a crimson which is a cold red then we've got this one that's called rose and this is called peach red but it's kind of like a neon red there is prussian blue and ultramarine blue i'll go come back to that one there's lilac sky blue cerulean blue uh viridian green deep green sap green pale green Burned umber, black and grey. And that's that's a fine range of colours. Um, to, to get back to the Prussian blue, um, I was a little confused and disappointed in this one. Uh, normally, Prussian blue is a, a pigment on its own. It's a, usually a single pigment colour and it's usually PB27, which is the Prussian blue. Now this is a strange mix. This is PB15, which is thalo blue, and then PB23, which is dioxine purple. And that threw me a little bit because I got the ultramarine blue, and an ultra, and that's a single pigment, and it's PB29 as it should be. This is the the blue that leans towards uh, the purples and violets, and that's what you use to mix those colors with. Uh, using a cold red like the crimson so that's all good and fine then the prussian blue would be normally the greenish blue that you keep in your mix set to mix greens with or to adjust whatever greens you got so a pb15 would be a, a good uh, alternative uh, f for a prussian blue if it was just a straight thalo blue because uh, that is, is a fantastic color to mix greens with. But once they put the, the violet in there, then we get a, a blue that leans more towards red. So why do it give me two basically warm red, uh, warm blues? Um, I've tested this one. It can mix greens they're just not as bright as they could have been if they had just given me a thalo or and everybody else a thalo blue instead and it's not that they can't make thalo blue because i got the watercolor set sitting here 
you guys have went and tested that, check this out. In here is a tube of Thala Blue. So they obviously make paint gel that is just Thala Blue. And here is the same weird mix and they call that Persian Blue too. So that is kind of an odd thing to put in there. And those are the two mixing blues that are in there. The other two blues that we got is the sky blue and the cerulean blue. And those are convenience colors, meaning they are mixed pigment colors where they have added white to it, PW6. Again, titanium white in both blue colors. And that means that they're not super good for, for mixtures. You can use them, but it will they will make some some special greens uh, and not the the clear greens that I would maybe prefer. Um, I don't mind using white in some some colors, but I prefer to mix it in myself because once you have mixed white in, the the what you can use that color for is kind of a little bit limited. Um, the neon color I'm not gonna use. It's listed as being uh, medium light fast. And uh, I don't, don't believe that for a second because that would be the first neon color anyone ever produced to be any kind of light fast. Um, most companies who sell neon colors will not give you a light fast rating. And that's because they can actually go, uh, go pale or gray within sometimes if you're unlucky within weeks. Um, and I haven't seen any neon colors that lasted more than maximum a year or so before they started looking kind of dull and weird. So, but other than that, the, the overall, I think the, the colors in here is, is okay. Here I've been testing out some mixes and here I used the Prussian blue and I mixed it with, um, all the yellows, both the yellows and the, this is the um, oh, ochre, yellow ochre. So that that will usually give kind of an, uh, an olive green because it is already a, a kind of a brownish gray. Um, and here I have used the, the green it, to, to darken up the greens that uh, comes in the set. And they're absolutely usable greens, but they are not kind of really high vibrant high chroma greens they are a little bit muted and that is that purple in that mix that that just makes it that i haven't tried with uh, making mixing greens with ultramarine because the ultramarine if they mix greens at all it is even duller than this and i mean it's it's not bad greens it is just you because they mixed that violet in there and the uh, I didn't provide a, a clean blue that is, uh, is green leaning now all the greens you can mix with this set will be not a lot more vibrant than this um, you can use straight the, the the green the greens in the set straight up and you can add yellow to them so you can make them more yellowish but you can't make a, like a dark and still vibrant green because this is, uh, yeah. Um, I guess these are, I, I would maybe have liked to be able to put put a little bit of thalo blue in that. Um, but hey, it's not the end of the world. It is just uh, like a little kink in the, in the seal. Here I was trying the, the crimson because the crimson is also a mixed color, but it's two red pigments they have put together and it works just fine. This is with that uh, um, Prussian blue. Normally Prussian blue makes kind of a lot more grayish uh, purples, but this is quite <laughs> quite vibrant actually. And no surprise, it is a phthalo blue usually makes good purples and yeah, you add some more purple to it. so. No surprise that it goes well this way. And that's the ultramarine. And these are the two blues mixed with white. Uh, it, the white is very obvious in this one because the white pigment brings an opacity to the, the, the paint. Um, it makes it... 
yeah, it's very opaque and it, it's not. Uh, it's maybe a little more dead than a, a like these colors that it has no white in it. You might have to see it up up live in, in front of you to to appreciate the difference. But there is a difference. I was surprised how dark this one when it went nearly black. It's not weird that it goes towards a black or a gray because uh, that blue has green in it. Um, it's mixed with thalo green and thalo blue and then some white. But I don't think there's a lot of white in it because it went so dark. Normally the white will prevent colors from getting very dark. But um, that was a very, very dark purple that I got out of that. Here I've been playing with the reds. First the scarlet red, made an orange just with the mid yellow. Then I was testing the ultramarine. Here I tested uh, yellow ochre. And here I tested it with the crimson. And I let the pa uh, paint sit. I've just been mixing it directly on the paint. And the, that ring is where I put the paint down. And I had to go and do something. I came back and it had dried a little bit. And I couldn't remove that ring. So don't mix your paints on the paper. Uh, that is the Prussian blue with, with this, it went pretty dark and it's not surprising as uh, Scarlet is leaning towards orange and uh, yeah, the Prussian blue is is nearly a, a uh, contrast. It, it goes a little brown up here with the red is dominant in the mix. Um, and if it's more even it goes a little more towards a blackish purple and it goes black and bluish depending on how much blue is in there and here are those two blues again the sky blue and the cerulean blue and the cerulean blue again went fairly dark um, and here I took the vermilion and that is the Lemon yellow, the mid yellow, um, ultramarine, uh, yellow ochre, and here I got something that looked like a sienna, raw sienna type of color. And then, surprise, surprise, when I mixed it with the, the Prussian blue, it actually went black. This is nearly as black as the, the, the black that is paint that is in the set, which was uh, quite interesting. Uh, it is very useful because I like mixed blacks better than flat blacks. So um, they are quite nice to use. My my swatch here, I tried to do it pretty much just out of the tube and with pretty much just the paint that uh, the water that was in my brush after I, I rinsed it. Um, normally you would not use the paint straight out of the tube, not very much at it uh, at the time, anyways. Gouache is meant to be mixed up with a bit of water. Um, and as soon as you add just a little water to this and mix it in, it, it flows quite nicely. I was just curious to see how it looked right out of the tube. Um, you can see m that my color swatches, I added more water to them. And I haven't tried to, to lay them out flat, I was just mixing them and, uh, and I left them as they were. So they will streak if you are, if you don't uh, make sure to, to mix them well and, and and uh, and stop your brush strokes where the color stops. Um, but that's no fault of the paint. That is how I painted it. And I actually think that's kind of cool because if you want to use brush strokes as part of your making textures or, or your paint style, you, you can get your brush strokes to show. This paper is also very sized so it doesn't grab onto the pigment very well either and that has something to say as well. So the the way the paint works uh, as it applies to the paper is actually quite nice. It is way better than uh, most uh, gouaches I have tried in, in that price range. So uh, overall I'm, I'm quite happy with the set. I haven't tried to do a painting yet. That is coming up next. But by and large, I think this is a, a quite a, a decent set. 
they caught this 24 set cost right around 17 euros or so on Amazon uh, and it cost about 17 pounds on their, their UK website I haven't looked up the, the U US prices just look up amazon.com and see for yourself um, I think um, yeah I was more happy with the quash than I was originally with the watercolors, I have to say. So uh, I'm looking forward to, to try to do a painting with it. So I will stop the camera and plan for, take out what I need to, to paint. So just a second. <laughs>
So this is just the end of the video and I better speed up because I don't have lots of time. These were really fun to paint with and um, they layer quite nicely. I will make another video about painting with gouache and explain things a little more thoroughly there. I went in fairly quickly with fairly thick layers here and that's one way to work. You can do other things as well. But I'm really happy with these. So thank you all for watching. Please come back, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. I'll see you for another video soon. Bye.